In this Grasshopper Attractor tutorial, I'm going to talk about Point Attractor and how you can use it to produce a smooth mesh and then come up with these bumps. As you can see that I am uh, controlling this Point Attractor and I can also control the distribution of the bumps as you can see here and uh, we can also combine this with the Curve Attractor which I will give in another, uh, another tutorial and then I'm going to explain this with Viverbird uh, as you can see here uh, you can simply produce this smooth mesh uh, with this tutorial so uh, I'm going to explain how we define the point attractor how we will produce the mesh and make this smooth mesh in Grasshopper So first of all, uh, what I want to do is to go to new document and make another new grasshopper file. Uh, you can also download this example from the website. So let's just get started. Uh, we can go to point and let me just put the bifocals plugin so you can see. Uh, and let's just make three points. And I'm going to give three points here. And basically what I'm going to do is to produce two sets of curves here for the rails and then we can produce uh, uh, three different uh, curves for the sections and make a sweep to surface. So you can also do this tutorial with any surface you want. So this is also an exercise for the sweep to uh, surface. So we can go to the curve and use this interpolate tool. And let's just give this here, okay? I'm going to copy and paste this, uh, control C, control V. And again, let's just highlight this. Remember, you have to go to the display and put the gumballs on so you can move those points. So let's just move this a little bit in the Y direction so we can make those rails happen. And now what we want to do is to make the sections. So the easy, the way I'm going to use is to uh, produce lines, three lines here and move the center of this in the Z direction so I can uh, produce an arc. So let's just do this. We can produce a line with uh, these two set of points. Okay, that's not going to be put. And now we have those lines. We can go to the curve. We have this point on curve tool. So we can just define the point on curve. That's the mid of that. And now I'm going to move this in the Z direction. So let's just do this in the Z direction and we can just go 12.65. So you can see that this will control uh, all the centers. So you can see that we have all of the centers moved by eight. And now I can give this uh, three different sliders so I can control the first one. Uh, here we go, the second one and the last one. Here we have it. And now we can go to the curve, the primitive, and I'm going to use the arc three points. So let's just do this, arc three point, uh, the start of the arc, uh, the point on the arc interior, and the end of the arc. So the start will be this point, the point on the arc will be these points which we moved in the z direction, and the point at the end of the arc will be these points. So let's just give this. And here we have those arcs, as you can see here easily. Let's just turn these off. And we can control the Z direction of those arc simply by a number slider, okay. So at the end, I'm going to make the surface. We can simply use the sweep two command to have two rails. So let's just do this, sweep two. The rail one will be this curve and the rail two will be this curve and here we have the sections so this is the uh, fastest way you can uh, produce a parametric surface now we can just move these points and produce something new we can also change the height And let's just put this on the high quality so you can see the results. And this is the surface we are getting. Okay. Here we have that. Uh, we can simply just go 
and put the display custom preview to that so you can see the surface if you want to change this and you can just give this a swatch so change the color you can understand that better okay so this is the first step to produce a parametric surface which we want to uh, put those bumps on it and now what i want to do is to make this in mesh because those bumps are produced in the mesh plugin beaverbird so what we want to do is to uh, first go to the surface utility and then use iso trim i want to use this technique because this will produce uh, this will divide the surface into sections and first you have to give the iso trim to the surface the domain to i've talked about this in many tutorials but for now in this tutorial we can simply use the divide domain two uh, in the math section in the domain section divide domain two and divide the domain surface into uv counts so we can say maybe eight to twelve in the UV count and give this to the domain. Let's just turn this off. Turn everything off and here we go. Uh, we can simply change the division. I guess that we have to bring this to U and bring this to V. Okay, we can increase the divisions for the U count and here we can divide this for the V count. Okay, so these are the sections we have. Uh, but in one, uh, one of the tutorials, I uh, explained that this is nerve surface. So when we want to skip this and go into the mesh, I'm going to give you a small tip. Just uh, look at this for a moment. So what I want to do is to just save this file, save as, okay, one. And here we go. You can see that this file is one megabyte. And that is because we have those nerve surface. They have all the details on the surface and we can uh, extract any point we want. So what I want to do is to make those into meshes. So we've talked about this, we can use the simple mesh tool, it's in the mesh utilities and now what happens if I bake this mesh and you can see there is two uh, ways you can see the mesh. If you just hit Control M you can see it and if you just again we don't see the edges and that is because we have this display and preview mesh edges on and off. So now let's just take this and we have those meshes. Let's save this file again and you can see that it's 160 kilobytes. So that means that you can easily switch between nerves and mesh especially when you have a surface that is uh, four edges or three edges, triangle or rectangle. So we can now simply go to Viverbird and try uh, different tools, which is really awesome. Uh, you can go to the Viverbird tool, and here we have uh, a tool called Stellate Accumulation. And that is really cool because you can simply give a mesh to that, and it will find the center of that mesh and move it in the normal direction. So you don't need to uh, make an area centroid you don't need to extract the normal and then use a move so you can see that if i give this a number we can control those in the z direction okay okay so i guess uh, i want to show you first how to uh, produce a smooth surface uh, with the beaver but then i'm going to add the point attractor so you can understand how point attractors will help you to produce the results. So for now, just see how we can use the Viva to produce those uh, soft and smooth surfaces. What I'm going to do is to, first of all, you always have to uh, use the Viva join mesh and weld to join them together. So I'm going to give this to here and go to weld, set the Boolean to true. That means we want to join them. So what happens is that we have a one nice single mesh here. Then what we want to do is the next step is to use the Catmull Clark subdivision and the Catmull Clark will help you to produce a smooth mesh. So here we go. We can give the results to Catmull Clark, turn everything off. And I'm going to give this a three level a three level of smoothing things. And here we go. And as you can see here at the corners I'm going to smooth naked edges and set it to fixed because we want the corners to be fixed. And here we go. We can bake this. And you can see how 
easy it is to produce a smooth bumped surface okay here we go and we can also simply put our display custom preview to this and turn the messages off control M and you can see that it's happening okay let's just give this a swatch and change the color okay so now you can see that I can change the height of that uh, distance of the stellate tool just as I show you you can see that we can increase those bumps by a number slider so the problem is I want to show you how uh, let's just change the surface to something new maybe we just bring this a little bit down change this and make a simple surface and maybe we just change those points bring them a little bit in so you can see a new surface okay that's a little bit too high and what we wanted to do we can also give this a height uh, if I just move this in the Z direction you can see that I'm bringing this up let's just bring this back this can also be a cool surface and we can just decrease that height to maybe near zero and also this one so here's the base surface okay so what we want to do is to make a point attractor for this and let's just increase the numbers maybe to 28 and 20 because i want to show you how you can add a point attractor and see the results okay so the distance of this stellate accumulation has to be something different for each of those cells the first thing we have explained this in the course but for this tutorial i want to give you to to the point attractor a quick tip first of all if you want to have a parametric point attractor on a surface you can use the evaluate surface you can also watch the evaluate surface uh, tutorial so let's just give this to the evaluate surface the reparameterize we explained that because we want to make this zero one zero one and then you can use simply an md slider to define the point attractor and you can see that i can change this uh, let's just turn everything off and turn the surface on so you can see the point attractor here and this is the point we want to attract so to make it easy and not complicated i'm going to give uh, three different attractors so you can use this for more than one attractors okay so let's just make this uh, maybe three attractors on our project and we want to affect those meshes by this point attractor we have this point in the evaluate surface and we want to work with these point attractors so first of all if we want to affect each cells based on those attractors what we want to do is to go back and before we weld them we made that simple mesh let's just put the control m on and you saw that we just divided this into meshes what you have to do is to uh, take the area of those meshes so this is the centroid of those mesh uh, and compare those centroids to these point attractors we want a distance so these centers are going to be uh, find the distance between these centers to this point attractor maybe these points it's going to divide this technique is going to divide that so these points are going to for this attractor these points for this one and these for this point attractor and the simple trick is to use the CP point closest point so remember uh, take an area of your geometry take the point attractors and use this CP point which you give the centroids to the point and give the attractors to the cloud and we have explained the theory of the tower behind this in the course so i'm not going to give uh, go into that because we have to explain what are we doing we are finding the distance between what is the uh, search from what is the cloud we want to search and for now the quickest tip you can give is to give the center of the grids to the point and the attractors to the cloud and we have that distance okay now we want to remap this you can download the remap from this uh, tutorial on the website but you will always have remap in from this uh, address you can go to parametric 
3d.com backslash en backslash remap. So always remember you can download this with backslash en backslash remap. You can also download uh, the Viverbit plugin. Uh, so all of these plugins and tools are going to go in backslash remap, weaverbird, launchbox, toolbox, and so on. So let's just remap. Remap means scaling all of those distances, which is 30, 35, 32. I don't know. If I give this to the distance here, let's just turn, uh, disconnect that and just turn this on. If I give this distance remapped, not remapped, the distance to this distance, you can see that these are a little bit weird and they are too big. They, the uh, stellate combination is coming out too big. And if we want to affect that, we have to scale that a little bit. So you can easily use remap and say that I want to make this between 0 0.2 and maybe 5, okay? And there's another tip which I have to explain. And as you can see, there is no really uh, anything happening. It's all like one number. So the last thing, if you want to use the attractor, because this grasshopper attractor tutorial is just uh, one with Weaver, but I'm going to give different tutorials about the attractor in the new near future. So maybe one month or two months later. But for this tutorial, when you have to use those meshes, you have to graft the inputs so each of those meshes go to each of those distances. So now, if I just bake this, you can see that this uh, stellate cumulation is smaller and these are bigger because they are affecting the distance. And then we can simply go to weld and for the weld to be, uh, to have the results for the weld, uh, you can see that these are in groups. So it will just weld the first one so we don't have a weld. If you have those groups, you have to flatten. Again, you can watch the what are these icons tutorial. I will put them in the card and you can also search for what is uh, what are these icons if you want to know more. And for those who have uh, are the course members, they can watch uh, maybe five or six tutorials about groups. For now, we can simply flatten them so all of those uh, 560 meshes go welded and here we have the results so let's just turn everything off here we have let's just go control M here you can see that they are com becoming smooth and I can change this so you can see the results and let's just make this one attractor so we go here and you can see that this attractor is affecting those bumps right if I bring it here, perhaps it's here or something here. Uh, you can see that this is affecting. We can decrease the number maybe to 14 divided by 2 and 10. So those bumps become, becomes, uh, uh, I decrease those bumps. So let's just increase that height. And now you can see these results better. Okay, so this is the technique you can use with the point attractor. You can also uh, make a, change the distribution. So this is an advanced tip for those who want to know. You can remap this. Okay, remap this to zero and one, so you don't change the minimum and the maximum, and then use the graph mapper. And this is the technique we have talked about this many times in many tutorials. So if you say, what is this, uh, or it's something foreign for you, you can easily go to the tutorials and watch this technique. I have explained this many times. So uh, we have scaled that to zero and one, then we use the graph mapper, then you can scale it back in what you want. And with this graphs, we can go to maybe uh, busier distribution you can see that I can change those distribution easily you can see that point attractor is affecting more on that if I go to sign I guess I have to bring more divisions here so you can see and understand what's happening on the sign one uh, but you can see that this point is giving a sign distribution let's just get that here we go. You can see that this is going down again. This circle thing is going down and then we have it again. 
So you can also combine those graphs if you want to have different distributions. And at the end, we can also go to VivaVert and give this a thickness by using this mesh thicken. Let's just give this, and I don't need too much distance. So perhaps something like 25% is enough because the default is maybe something near four or five. And this will just produce a thickened mesh. So this is the end part of the tutorial. And you can see that this will give you a thickness here. Let's just go back to shaded so you can see that. And this is the thickness. And let's just go to perspective and have the clipping plane. And I'm going to give this a clipping plane and cut this so you can see that, okay? So this is the way we are producing those smooth things on the surface here. And you can see that this is just amplifying that again when we go further from the point attractor. So this tutorial can help you understand about point attractor. We have talked this in different Grasshopper tutorials. You can also watch the Grasshopper basics if you don't know what's happening. And thank you for watching. Uh, hit the like button so you can see more about of, uh, more of our videos and subscribe to our channel. So uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to put also the Weaverbird uh, tutorial. So if you want to more, know more about Weaverbird, you can watch that. And I will also add another video which is about point attractor and I think it's Orient or something. If you know, want to know more about attractors, watch that tutorial. So those two tutorials will help you to understand Weaverbird and attractor things more. But this was uh, a point attractor technique. I wanted to show you how you can use that to produce uh, cool results in Grasshopper, especially combining that with Weaverbird and uh, going for mesh. Thank you for watching and subscribe to our channel. And you can also watch uh, something that is related to this video, that corner, and see you next time.